You already know what it is. It's your boy Lay Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Jordan Peterson, you up the bat. Bah. Tell me I hate the fucking go. It's your boy Lay Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Focus on you in 2022. Focus on you in 2022, man. But check this out, we're doing something different today, man. Um, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, how do I stay motivated? What are things that I do? What are things that I, you know, watch, read, whatever? This is one of the things that I tap into, you know what I'm saying, to actually help me stay motivated and help me, you know, keep my mind focused and sharp. So Jordan Peterson is actually somebody I recently got on probably a few months ago. Um, and he has a lot of different takes, but a lot of things that I really like about this dude super knowledgeable guy when it comes to certain information and he's somebody that i listen to you know what i'm saying in regards to his motivation and stuff like that and just his perspective i think is super dope so what one of the things i wanted to do was i wanted to tap into something different kind of like when i did my daily affirmations when i would post those you can go on my channel and see those i got a playlist of daily affirmations of monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday just different quotes different things like that to help build you know what i'm saying your your confidence your, your motivation all that type of stuff so this is something I was thinking about trying out. So I was like, how about we go through some of his videos or other motivational people that I listen to as well. I got a long list of people that I listen to and uh, you know, I, I tap in with. But this video is the victim mentality is ruining your life. Take charge of your life. Let's go ahead and check it out, man. I'm excited. And I'm gonna give y'all my opinions and, and we're gonna break it down here and there, you know what I'm saying? But fire squad. What's popping? Let's get it. Pinocchio was transformed into a victim and he's offered this, he's offered this identity. Before we even go any further, I want y'all to really like, we're gonna break this down together, but I want y'all to pull something from it as well. If something that stuck out to y'all in this, or something that he said or something that, something that triggered something in you, Write that in the comments below. Let's talk about it, you know what I'm saying? But I really want this to be a real engaging type of video to where I'm gonna give y'all my opinion on certain things and I want y'all to give me your opinion as well. I'm gonna go back and read the comments as well. Let's go. And he takes it. Now it's partly because he's deceived and, and manipulated, but it's also partly because the Fox offers him the abandonment of responsibility as payment for, mm. as payment for adopting the victim identity. So. This is where his own lack of morality, let's say, because this is all about Pinocchio's development as a character, right. plays a role in his demise. So, if I'm a victim, then everyone else owes me something, and I don't have to take any responsibility. And so, oh, if I'm a victim, everybody owes me something. That's the fucked up part. You got to change that mentality to like, hey, don't nobody owe me nothing. You owe it to yourself to make that shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's your responsibility. It's your duty to make sure that you get to where you want to get to. Like, we can't just always, you know, expect somebody else to do something for us. No, you can do it for yourself. At least that's what I was taught. You know what I'm saying? It might take a little bit longer, but it's your responsibility. Let's go. One of the things I've wondered, here's something to think about. It might be that the sense of meaning that life can provide to you is proportionate to the amount of responsibility you decide to take on. Mm. Not, that'd be very strange if it was the case, you know, because responsibility, of course, is a kind of weight, obviously. Right. And it's difficult to take on responsibility. But if any positive emotion that you feel and your control of anxiety and the control over pain mm. is dependent on the activation of these systems that watch you move towards a desired goal, then the more complete and weighty the goal is, the more kick there's going to be in the observation that you're moving towards it. And I, you know, you kind of already know this because you'll, you'll have observed in your own life that when you're engaged in something that you believe in, right. that the time passes properly. <laughs> right. You know, you can see this even if you're, maybe you're reading a paper and it's actually related in some intelligible manner to something that you want to learn. Right. So, even though it's difficult, you get engaged in it, you can remember it better. That's 
important right here where he's talking about engaging and learning about something that you want to learn about and i can definitely attest to that when i'm learning about stuff that i want to learn about that shit time be flying but stuff that i did not want it take forever time be dragging so i think the important part about that part is find something that you're passionate about and learn about that then time flies and like you said you retain it better you could process it better and you don't you're not so likely to fall asleep and you're not so likely to want to find distractions all of that you can get into right. it and right. it would be very interesting if that was proportionate to the degree of responsibility that you're willing to shoulder and i, I think you can make a strong case for that i've also often wondered imagine you could offer people a choice here's the choice you could say well your life isn't meaningful the nihilists have got it right there's no meaning in your life and mm. because of that, there's no reason for you to accept any responsibility. So you can live a responsibility-free life and maybe one of impulsive pleasure seeking, but a responsibility-free life, but the price you pay is that it doesn't get to be meaningful. Ooh. Or you could say to someone, no, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna say, you can live a meaningful life, right. but it's only gonna be as meaningful as the amount of responsibility that you're willing to bear. Mm. And then you might say, well, what would people choose? Because everybody right. also always makes noises about wanting to have a meaningful life. But if the price you pay for that is the adoption of responsibility, then it's not so obvious that people would choose meaning over, you know, over pointless pursuits. Right. If they had to, if the benefit they got for choosing the pointless pursuits was that they really didn't have to care about anything they ever did. Right? It's no responsibility. And that's really what Pinocchio is offered. And that's what the coachman offers him. And that's interesting because, you know, so far it's been the fox and the, and the cat, and they're kind of two bit hoods. And so the pathological pathway that they offer Pinocchio is not the worst of the pathological pathways. But here, right. at least as far as the imagination, the collective imagination that created this movie is concerned, is this is where you get to the most pathological form of, let's call it temptation. And that's the temptation to engage in to abandon responsibility and to engage in impulsive pleasure seeking, short term pleasure seeking. Mm, that's a huge killer, short term pleasure seeking. If we learn to put off the short term and eliminate that and look towards the long term goals of what we're trying to do and trying to accomplish, our day to day habits will be completely different. Completely different. Once we shift our mindset to understanding like yo this is just short term this is only going to be here for a while but when you start looking ahead and a lot of times it's difficult for us to look out and project but you got to start practicing that let's go so here's the fox pretending to be a doctor investigating um pinocchio's illness and he makes some notes which is all just meaningless scribble Right? It's like white noise. And it doesn't matter that the arguments that he's making is, are completely incoherent. And it doesn't matter that he actually doesn't know anything. He, what he's selling is easy to buy. And so Pinocchio buys it. And by the end of the conversation with the fox, he's pretty convinced that he's useless and that he needs a vacation. First of all, he breaking down this story so f I would have never thought about all this shit in this story. I would have never thought about breaking it down to in this intricate way that he's crazy. Vacation. You know, this is an edible, an edible situation as well, which I touched on the other lecture. I mean, it's fair. Let's imagine that you have a child that is a little on the neurotic side, so high negative emotion, and maybe one that's also a little bit on the sickly side, so has a variety of let's say relatively minor ailments, but ailments nonetheless. Right. right. So what that means as a parent, we'll say mother for this example, because I want to use the Oedipal example. Okay. You have to make a decision all the time about exactly how you're going to treat that child. One decision is, well, I'm not going to, you don't have to go to school today because you're not feeling well. It's like, fair enough. But do you make the same decision the next day? And do you make the same decision the next day? And let's Good imagine question. that you enable the child to avoid responsibility as a consequence of capitalizing on their illness. 
well then that's not going to be very good for the child. The rule with an, a sickly child has to be something like, I'm going to push you right to your limit. Right. Because otherwise, how is the person going to figure out what they can do? And right. if they can't figure out what they, they can do, then they're not going to be able to make their way in the world at all. Right. And then that gets muddied very badly if you're not exactly sure that you want them to make their way in the world, you know? Maybe you're just Ooh. as happy. Now you're putting the onus back on the parent. Maybe you don't want to push your child that much and actually see what they, maybe you're coddling them. How many instances have you seen that where a parent is babying the child and the child is the ones that suffers the most? Wow. Happy because you'd be sitting at home alone mm. if your child was there with you. Mm. And maybe you'd be just as happy at some level if they never grew up at all. Because then they won't leave. <laughs> and so, and maybe that's because you have a terrible marriage and you're lonesome, you know? Right. Maybe it's an abusive marriage and your husband has chased away all your friends. And so you don't have anything at all. And maybe that's because mm. you didn't stand up for yourself very well. Apart from the fact that he was, you know, tyrannical in his central nature. And so then, all those little warps and bends in your psyche are going to manifest themselves right right in the background of every single one of those decisions. Ooh, every single one My of those decisions. My daughter had a lot of illnesses when she was uh, adolescent and they were very serious and it was very difficult to figure out what to do about that because you, you couldn't exactly apply normative rules, right? And we mm. always had to figure out if she was communicating her symptoms to us, how seriously to take those. Right. And the answer was the least amount of serious possible. It's something like that because we needed to know and she needed to know what she could do in spite of the fact that she had problems. Right. And one of the things I really- What can you do in spite of the fact of your problems? People get so bombarded with their problems and, and crippled and paralyzed but they act like it's stuff that they can't be doing in the midst of their problem or their ailment. It's always something, no matter how big or how small it is. And I think we also overlook how powerful the small things that we can do over time once they build up the type of impact that they can have on us. We can't just keep overlooking the small things that we can do because they can also add up to being a great thing that can change us. Let's go. I really tried to instill in her and I think it worked, is that you don't ever want to use it, your illness as an excuse for not doing anything. Right, right. Not consciously, you know? Sometimes you might not know, I'm not feeling well, How, what true. can I do? Well, you don't That's know, true. right? Because That's sometimes when you're not feeling well, you can do more than you think, and sometimes you can do less than you think. It, it's not That's like true. it's obvious, but sometimes right. it's obvious, you know, this little temptation flits through your mind and you think, well, I don't really want to do what I'm doing today and I'm not feeling very well, so I don't have to do it. You do that a hundred times, then you don't know how sick you are anymore. And then you're, then you're in real trouble because not only are you sick, but you actually have, you've muddied the waters. Right. And so you have both problems then, is you're actually ill and you've betrayed yourself by using that. If y'all knew here, y'all probably don't know, I'm all about self-love and positivity. I see it in every video. And he just said, you betrayed yourself. That's why I push self-love so much, because once you know who you are, once you understand your capabilities, then you can start maneuvering differently. So when he say you betrayed yourself, that's going against your own being, your own self, your own identity. That's something that we never want to do. Is it hard as fuck? Absolutely it's hard as fuck, but it takes practice. This is a lifestyle. This is a, a practice thing that has to be practiced every day. This is not something, it might be some days where you might lose, you know what I'm saying? And that's just, that's just life. But the, 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 the goal is to always try. Let's go. Using that as an excuse not to pursue your responsibilities. Right. There's a deep idea in the West too. It's like, pick up your damn suffering and bear it. Mm. And try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. Well, that's a truth. Life is suffering. Yes. Mm. Well, who wants to admit that? Well, just think about it. Well, so what do you do in the face of that suffering? Try to reduce it. <laughs> right. Start with yourself. What good are you? Get yourself together for Christ's sake so that when your father dies, you're not whining away in a corner and you can help plan the funeral and you can stand up solidly so that people can rely on you. Right. That's right. better. Don't be a damn victim. Of course you're a victim. Right. Jesus, obviously. 
put yourself together. And that's the other message of the West. It's like, how do you overcome the suffering of, the, of life? And I'm not saying it's only the message of the West. Right. How do you overcome the suffering of life? Is be a better person. Absolutely. That's how you do it. Well, that's hard. It takes responsibility. And I think, you know, if you said to someone, you want to have a meaningful life? Everything you do matters. That's the definition of a meaningful life. But mm. everything you do matters. Mm. So you're going to have to carry that with you. Or do you want everything. to just forget about the whole meaning thing? and Everything. Then you don't have any responsibility because who the hell cares? And you can wander through life doing whatever you want, gratifying impulsive desires for how useful that's going to be. And you're stuck in meaninglessness, but you don't have any responsibility. Which one do you want? Mm. Well, ask yourself, which one are you pursuing? Get yourself together. Transcend your suffering. See if you can be some kind of hero. Make the suffering in the world less. Well, that's the way forward, as far as I can tell, if there is any way forward. Mm. All right, that was Jordan Peterson with Victim Mentality, man. Um, phenomenal. Like I said, these are some of the things that I tap into, you know what I'm saying, to stay motivated, to stay sharp, to keep my mind sharp. I especially listen to stuff like this when I'm working out. Like, um, I made a conscious effort to be like, I don't want to listen to no music. I want to listen to motivational things, things that's going to uplift me, those type of things. And I've been doing that for like three, four, five, six, seven years, probably. So those are things that I tap into to keep me motivated, to keep my mind in the right space and for me to also to challenge my way of thinking as well. So y'all let me know if y'all want to see more of these type of videos. Also, like I said, I have daily affirmations. I got a playlist over there where you can go through those different days of the week and you can just tap in and it got a quote there. It got some motivational for you. Um, but I was trying to figure out new ways to add different type of content, especially this type of content of uplifting the people. You know what I'm about, self-love and positivity, focus on you, you know what I'm saying, in 2022. All these slogans that I come up with, health is well, be true, be you, all these type of things. So y'all let me know if y'all wanna uh, see more of these. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. But it's your boy Layback, man, self-love and positivity. Till next time, Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Hey!